three. Let's go. OG on Radiant, D2 Hustlers on Dire. We've been playing Dire side every single game, so by now they should be 100% comfortable on this side. Just uh, and Also, they have Theolico on the clockwork, so he's going to break the smoke. Will it cost his life? It will not. All right, good stuff. Yeah, also one of those heroes for Theolico that he kind of... He, he can, but kind of can't as much as you can with Rubik have those big carry performances, so... Really looking to see uh, Abzandic step up this uh, this game. He had some good lanes up against Thompson, uh, but this time around, if he's able to shut down the Storm Spirit, then they're going to look good here for, for D2 Hustlers. These lanes are very, very important for them. Things can fall apart very, very fast, especially up against like an IO Beast Master lane. They can put a lot of pressure on you, take you to your one tower early. They can rotate towards the mid lane. You always have to be careful of no one making a rotation with the Nature's Prophet, so... They can, they, if they can stabilize in landing phase and you know extend this game pretty deep in, then we may have a game on our hands. And what do you think other about this mid lane matchup between OD and Storm Spirit in general? Is this one of the situations I, where OD does actually have a better lane, at least one winning lane here? Yeah, I, I, th I think the o OD in the Storm matchup is is pretty decent for for OD. Like the Storm's going to be able to farm with uh, with Static Remnant, but it's super easy for him to just spam out these these astrals. I don't think it's unplayable for the storm, but there's definitely much more kill threat from uh, Abzandic to to be able to kill the storm spirit. But as soon as Thompson gets six, um, he's going to be able to just rotate in towards the jungle, and it should be okay. All right, let's see how this early game goes. Down bottom, we have Divine Lament, the Oracle. They'll be taking on Kit Track and no one. And that's one of the reasons they picked the Thunderlord. They don't anticipate him getting into kill slots early on. Uh, they get a glimpse back onto the Oracle, presumably to stop him pulling the lane, but he's still going to be able to do so. And I think this bottom lane is not going to be filled with too much action. Fluke is going to be lots and lots of farming. Unless, like, Disruptor steps out of position, but I don't think that's going to happen all that much. Yeah, double melee lane into double range lane is generally just kind of going to be a, a, a farm fest because, you know, the Natures isn't able to abuse the Underlord much like something like a Drow would be able to, so... There's going to be a whole lot of lane pulling shenanigans, as you can see. The, the Kitrak and, and Theolical are uh, literally chasing each other through the jungle. <laughs> I want to have a brand new lane called the fourth lane, middle 2.0. Right. Who, so, who's oh, going to no, lose the, the game? This is new of... jungle roll. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what they were doing. See, Ice Frog, he never misses, man. Who's going to lose <laughs> the game of lane chicken? I, I think Kitrak has unfortunately lost the lane, the, uh, the game of lane chicken here. No, no, yeah. No. It's super hard to contest against this uh, clockwork, so you lose, what can you do? He's just gonna be able to go back top lane, Seb is about to lose his life and he dies first blood. Going down to Hakoda on the Morana. Okay. You love to see it if you're a fan of the D2 Hustlers, as they take that. It gives more space for Yuma to farm in the lane. And more time before he gets kicked out and has to farm elsewhere. Alright. Yeah, doing a, a good job at uh, just effectively trading. And, th and this is kind of the the one issue with uh, Beastmaster into the Animage lane is he's going to constantly uh, deal with your mana. Yes, you do have an IO, but IO is not going to be able to offset the amount of mana burn that uh, that an Animage has. So you can't go for this like Axes build where you're trying to spam out the Axes to, to deal the damage. And you kind of just have to hope that you can get a boar every so often and, and, and try and play that way. Yeah. Now there's just going to be a farm fest on that side of the map here down bottom. We do you see a glimpse back onto the Olicor, but is he going to die here? He gets into the trees, they get some tree and spawn in around him. A couple more right clicks is all they need, but the Olicor is still alive. Getting on the other side here, juking oh, the them troops. out. Got the Nikes on, but the kinetic field will be there. If he had a little bit more HP or a magic stick, he might have actually lived a little bit longer, but that is not the case for him. We'll end up burning away his life here. All right, good stuff coming in from OG down in this bottom lane. Yeah, playing it uh, really well, and you can just see the Vile Armor is just like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna hit some crates while you're you do, doing you, buddy. You just uh, you just keep chilling out. That's uh, perfectly okay. Yep. So has Ring of Health right now, so he should just be able to sustain himself pretty much forever down bottom. Yeah, he's he's gonna be perfectly fine, right? Like there's gonna be no real pressure until maybe you see a rotation coming in from from Topson or Seb. So. 
Um, so you have to be careful. But this mid lane is is really starting to become volatile for for Topson. This is what I talked about. There's a rotation and could be going down here. Okay, they get some assistance coming in from this IO, but there's still enough damage from Agentic that they can threaten Topson's life. One more Astral Orb would have been good enough. Uh, he doesn't find it though. The Tether from Seb will be keeping the Storm Spirit alive right now. They even bring in no one with the teleportation of the Nature's Prophet. They really oh. want to try and make sure they get this kill. And the right click did oh, come no. out from Agentic. He's still alive though. They weren't able to bring him down. Another Fairy Fire. Magic Wand, Fairy Fire, and the Ring of Health arriving in clutch keeps him alive in the mid lane so all these heroes they make their presence felt but they're unable to bring this od down everyone is on blinking health bars topson it was on like 10 hp after like 15 auto attacks it was like he was kind of armor toggling in the trees and speaking of the old court he's been found out Surely here they will have the glimpse one? all right they will add and take though has the astral can't find the range onto topson Unfortunately for him, does get it now, but certainly cannot close the gap to try and find the kill. A lot of action happening in this mid lane, but that's only the first kill. And Theolico are probably okay with this. Get the express trip home, and uh, now he can come back with full sticks. Has everything topped up so he can keep being a nuisance again in this bottom lane. First while top, Resolution came close to dying, Hakoda. Has a leap charge, you're gonna go after him. Rezo gets blinked upon right now. A couple of more right clicks will bring him down. One more hit from Yuma, but he's not gonna be able to find it. Hakoda oh, no. went for the Starfall, but the second one falls onto Seb rather than onto Resolution. And this Ayo of Seb yet again, allowing the side of OG to play to the limit. Yuma though, making sure that Hakoda ends up surviving as well. And uh, yet again, more blinking health bars, but no kills. <laughs> Yeah, you can just see that uh, both of these two teams are really trying to, to min-max on each other and, and really trying to abuse the limits of their heroes. And this is kind of the issue with the, the early game for a lot of these different heroes is they just don't have that extra bit, right? Like, you know, with, with the anti mage as soon as all the mana's gone, he really doesn't do all too much damage. So it's hard for him to convert on these kills. But look at the CS chart. These two hustles, they do a really, really good job at, at getting themselves an early advantage here. Dude, Theolok was actually a genius. He spent so much of the last few minutes playing around this mid lane, but the amount of time that he's spending here, it has forced the movement of Kitrak to come and spend time around middle to make sure he can offer up some defense. And that in turn means you're playing Nature's Prophet 1v1 into Underlord. Underlord with Vanguard is like, please, let me play this matchup every day of my life. So has a ton of CS to his name right now. No pressure can come out onto him from no one. And this is all just by Theoloko just standing mid, and he's still doing it. He's not going to actually go bottom whatsoever. He's going to force reactions all across the map. He's heading top now. So Resolution and Seb need to be very careful about their movements. Hakoda has an arrow. If they come out of step, okay, I think one of them is going to die here. Theoloko should be able to catch them. Seb is falling low. There's going to be the arrow connecting onto Resolution. They keep him inside the power cogs. Yuma trying to help beat him down. But they lack the damage, unfortunately, because of Seb. They might still try to run down Resolution between the three of them, and indeed they will. Rezo goes down in front of the Tier 1 tower. Kitrax was thinking about coming top, but he's not going to be able to make it in time. So that leaves them still playing 1v1 bottom. Kitrax is occupying middle. And you were mentioning that normally it's been OG with the advantage in the earlier portion of the game, but D2 Hustlers, they're the ones sitting with a 2k gold lead right now at 7 minutes in. Yeah, they're doing a really, really good job of just putting the pressure on it now with getting a kill on the Sep as he was trying to leave maybe get some wards down. Uh, G2 Hustlers are in a good spot and they're coming out on top of these lanes. No one TP to, to the high ground. He's going to have to TP back bottom. Yep. I mean, even though they get that kill yet again, it's another reaction force from them. They're the ones that are pretty much playing into what D2 Hustlers want to do. They need help though. Mid lane, they're gonna try and maybe get a quick kill onto Agentic. Kitrak has access to the glimpse, dropping down the Meteor Hammer, but it's gonna get interrupted by the glimpse play. Can they keep Agentic alive? He's still gonna live. They drop the hammer down. He will die inside of these power cogs, but the revenge is coming very fast. Yuma has made the rotation towards middle. He gets a kill onto this Raptor, and Disruptor will not be able to stay alive any longer. Yuma also is going to be going into the Vanguard. Looks like he might be going for the Radiance build this game rather than the Battle Fury. So he wants to be able to fight and be involved with his team as much as humanly possible. 
Yeah, he, he could also just go for... Um, I've seen any mages if, you know, they don't want to go for the, the kind of... I would say the meme version of, of the Radiance build. You can just disassemble the uh, the Vanguard and go into the Battle Fury when you're ready to have it. So Vanguard oh. feels better than what Perseverance does. So, um, yeah, you can try, try and go towards there. Um, looks like he's going to, and he's, he's having a fantastic game. So, heck, maybe he, he can do whatever he wants at this point. I mean, after Game 2's performance, he's allowed to do whatever he wants for the rest of the tour. Yep. He's like, boys, I'm doing this, and they can just say, okay, fine, bro. We believe in you. Yep. It's like, yes, sir. I'll follow along. <laughs> no one is going for a Midas as well, so he understands he needs to try and keep parity with, uh, with the Anti-Mage. So the Midas is going to help him do that. The OD is going to be able to flash farm now as well, thanks to the, uh, the Meteor Hammer. And... He's a threat whenever you see him on a lane, right? Like, I know a lot of people have played up against this OD Meteor Hammer. Same kind of deal these days. Um, and whenever you see him on a lane, you have to be very, very careful to, to make sure that you don't overstep. Because if you do overstep and he just gets this combination, it's going to be very, very hard to deal with. But they're going to come in with all heroes to try and kill him off so that combination no longer exists. They succeed in doing so, but Divine Lama has shown up to try and lend aid here. They cannot keep... The OD alive, but they might be able to find revenge. No one gets blinked on by Yuma. Yuma, happy to be involved yet again. No mana for the mana void, ironically enough, but they should still have the right click damage to bring down no one. And Yuma, this game is going better than even expected. All three top pole positions in the net worth are being occupied by D2 hustlers. He's had a free time in the laning phase. He's free to bound between top and middle. Just farming heroes, farming creeps. Divide Lama's pressuring bottom. And it really feels like OG are struggling to make big plays happen. Yeah, every now and then they can pick off one of these cores, but the cost is almost way too much for them to reliably pay. Although they might be able to bring down Divide Lama, they're going to try to outnumber him 4v1 in this bottom side of the map. Do they even have the damage to kill him? Well, we're going to find think out. They do. He's trying to TP. No way. Vortex will be there. In the meantime, Beastmaster dies on the other side of the map. But they do it with three heroes, not necessarily with four. They have to drop so many resources. He's so alive. Are you kidding me? Divide Llama. Oh my goodness. That took a long, long, long time for them to get that kill. You know, sad, sad face reaction as well. He thought that maybe he could just uh, hit the LTP button. This time around, they did say no. He did lose out with uh, Kitrek going... Towards that bottom side, Reza did have to go back to base as well. Or did he die? Yeah, they, they did lose Reza. So, I wasn't, yeah. um, wasn't just dreaming here. So, they trade an offliner for an offliner. I think you're probably a lot more happy with that if you are old G because you can start to, to kick out this Underlord, right? Like, where you can start to move him off the map and you can start putting your, your emphasis in other places because you have a storm. And you have a Nature's Prophet now with the Hand of Midas, and you also have a Beastmaster. So, like, you don't really have a core who's going to do much on the map. And I guess that's why it kind of falls on to uh, Topson to be the one that makes the rotations with the supports, because Nature's doesn't really want to do that. He wants to be the one that kind of connects in a little bit later on, and Rezo still needs time mm. before he becomes scary. Still yeah. fairly far away from the Overlord right now. He does not have it. Uh... He only gets the Midas now on no one. There's still going to be a little bit of time before this fully kicks in. So there's a moment that D2 Hostas can try and exploit this. They're moving top with the Moonlight Shadow. Both supports are covered by the dust as well. They're looking for Seb. They're looking for resolution. They're going to go on to Seb first. Preventing him from uh, getting the quick movement. Thanks to this uh, Power Cogs. They come in with the Dark Rift too. There's a hook shot onto this Io. And Io should end up dying. However, they do protect resolution. And uh, Divide Lama's like, well, I'm not here, he just goes right back. The Yellow will follow him, so they can mount defense onto this Underlord if need be, but I don't think OG have any interest in trying to force a fight onto this Underlord right now. Yeah, no, especially not without a, uh, a free tower. The uh, they're gonna go onto the Yellow Core, the Nature's Wrath flying all across the map, enables him to get the kill. Okay, Topson right. getting some smoke. You like that? You like to, to see that if you're an OG fan right now. But uh, Thompson's starting to claw his way back into this game. It never really ballooned out to a point that was scary. What do you want to see him build on Thompson after he finishes off his Witchblade? 
Is this a Sanj and Kai game for you, or does Shudi go straight BKB? I think you just kind of have to go BKB, right? Because you don't ever want in, to get into a scenario where you just, like, zip into a random pit of malice and just die. Like, that, that would feel so horrible, right? So, I feel like you, you're probably just going to have to go straight BKB. Then you can um, just use your BKB duration to, to try and find the Marana in the back lines. Just get her killed off. Maybe you can even try and go in on the, uh, the Atwood Devourer because he's going to be the one that's going to try and get the saves going for his team. So... If you go in on the OD at the same time, you can try and get a roar on the Animage or even try and get a roar on the uh, Underlord. And that's how the team fight's going to look, so... Mm. Probably speak a bit. Oh, it's top top right now. D2 Hustlers, they want to try to come and save Adzintik. Adzintik will Astral himself. Will his team get here in time to save him? No, they will not. I'm gonna look for some revenge, but they won't find them. And here comes Yuma. Huge mana void yeah. coming in, but not enough damage because he still had like half his mana available. Seb gets them out. Okay, not the best execution we've seen here from D2 Hustlers after they've lost Adzentech. They really want to collect the life of Seb, but this feels a bit too dangerous. He's going to come back with Topson. Topson jumps forward, able to find the Vortex out onto Hakoda. Hakoda not allowed to escape this one, as the Wrath of Nature also contributes some damage. And Topson, hoping to try to use the remainder of his mana to deal even more damage to the backlines. Unfortunately, Divine Lama shows up with the Crimson Guard. This is going to stall out this push for so long. All these heroes beating this down, and they should be able to eventually get it, but this is not exactly the speed they wanted to make it happen. But ultimately, they still get it. That's what matters at the end of the day. Yeah, just uh, sending five heroes towards that mid lane, and this is exactly what I was kind of leaning towards when, when I was seeing the Storm as being the one that's making the moves. He's the one that's being able to abuse this IO combination and play a little fast, so he doesn't have to play so greedy, and... Mm. There was a, a whole lot of uh, mechanics being uh, abused there by by Topson. He was constantly spamming the, the ball lightning so the OD could never get the Astral on him. And he eventually just had to Astral himself and that was more than enough time for, for Kitrak to be able to come in and just Static Storm on, on top of his head. So mm. it's, a, it's a very kind of hard game where you're looking at this and uh, OG are starting to, to claw back this lead. Oh, they know that there's no relocate available right now. They're going to try and find this kill. Relocate just came back. Did they have the damage to kill the storm before he saved? Yes, they do. Seb also in danger now himself and should end up getting brought down. Adds in sick with a double kill. All right. They find a little bit of a timing here onto the storm spirit. Good hook shot from the clock. And we spoke about what this clock can do for them. There's so many setup tools. You set up for Astral. You set up for Arrow. One spell guarantees that all the others can land. They just have to get that initiation if they can never find it. Yeah, and they also need to make sure that they're in good positions to be able to capitalize it. But Theolokor is, is really doing a good job this entire series at making sure that his positioning is very good in, in relation to his teammates. So Dalai Lama, he's getting relocated on. Uh, this, uh, taking them a little bit of time to get this kill. Eventually, they are going to find it, or maybe not. They get the Static Storm out, though. Under three heroes, Meme Hammer lands directly onto the Storm Spirit. But now there's no protection remaining for this OD. So they are able to kill him. Kitrak credited with the kill. But a lot of work being done by the Storm. And unfortunately for them, Yuma, although his presence was there, the Man of Weight not dealing enough damage to actually kill Storm Spirit. All right, these small skirmishes are just going slowly but surely OG's way. It's kind of funny that he used the uh, the mana void in that previous fight, but it did literally negative damage, so the fight <laughs> recap didn't even pick it up. That's funny. Oh, I'm pretty sure he mana voided him when he had like full mana, so uh, maybe he was just a little mistimed uh, when that came in. But OG once again. Understanding timings, knowing how to abuse them, knowing how to uh, abuse the map that they have, and they get directly on Davai Lama, who looks like a very immovable object, um, has definitely been moved this time around, and they just transition that directly into Roche. They have one of the best Roche uh, Aegis holding heroes in the game in the Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. And now they're just, you know, getting to a point where uh, no one is only slightly behind. The Anti Mage has full Desolator built up as well, and he just sits back and, and hits creeps until, you know, Topson as well as Seb just find people. And then he just walks in, cleans up some kills, goes back to farming, and it's going to slowly shrink this map. He has queued the BKB on Topson. Divai Lama, next up. I thought he was, he had queued up the blade mail, but I like this a lot more, going for this pipe of insight. 
Mm. Aghanim shot as well could, will be very, very good. So he can just pre-cost it and then get into the fight on top of the Static Storm. Doesn't have to force rush BKB. But the big item that's coming out soon is going to be BKB being available for Adzentic. Somehow OD will no longer be afraid of Static Storm. Only then has to fear the Primal Roar at this stage of the game. And that's been the build, big bottleneck for them. That Adzentic cannot play these fights safely just yet. But once he does... Yeah. Things look a lot better for them. Uh, should they should they smoke after they get the BKB, or do they need to wait for the pipe to be finished off as well before they try and make a play? I think just having BKB is fine. Like even if you just have the hood coming up for for Davai Lama, he's going to be okay to to try and stay alive. And you have the BKB to uh, at least keep uh, Azentic alive as well. But it looks like the, the smoke is coming out here from Old G. DTR says they're more than happy to, to keep farming, but Yuna's not farming. Like that's that's the yeah. main concern for me right now is is they're happy for this game to be slow, but Yuma is behind his own tier two tower, blinking Dyer's into his own base. They got spooked off. They did scan out the smoke, so I think they knew it was coming, but not able to find the best position to be. He's finally able to start farming again. Get close to finishing off the Manta style. Uh, let's see, what is no one building next? So he's going BKB as well, right after he finishes Desolator. Topson will have BKB soon. So they're approaching a very strong timing of the dual BKBs being up. And they already have the Harm of the Overlord from Resolution. So they can start playing in more advanced areas here. It's going to be down to D2 Hustlers to try and bounce them out as they play this big ball up style. Yeah, and it's kind of the same tale as what we saw in game number two except this time around d2 hustlers were the ones that had the strong early game uh, and the strong landing phase so old g aren't able to just kind of run at them and and see if they can figure it out they're having to play a little more methodical this time around and yeah as you said like the, these bigger v timings are, are going to be dirty and the is 100 percent dead Oof. and what well, no one might get like, revenge oh, though. A roar. oh, we got hit by an arrow from long, long range. Although they did not get the OD ultimate to actually reach him, so he also takes zero damage there. He's fine. He's chilled. You that was uh, almost kind of close. All right, so they took away the first life on the Aegis. Yuma's gone though. Doesn't want to stick around. So that's actually pretty big on the map. Yeah, they might not get any big kills, but. Taking away this Aegis, forcing old G to have to play for their next timing instead of being able to go now, that, that feels pretty good for them. Mm. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, it was just a response for when the, the IO came back. So Yuma just lying in wait, now has the Manta style done. 500 gold towards the Basher. Maybe he might have to build a BKB of his own this game. I guess there's not really much he has to worry about that he can't just deal with with, you know, uh, spell block, so. Spell yep. shield? Counter spell. Counter spell. What a. You're an old school player, you're calling on dying dirge, <laughs> spell shield. <laughs> they, they all they all mean the same thing, and it's just. It's just, I know that there's gonna be someone who's super pedantic and be like, mm, well, actually, it's counter spell, um, and I, I just don't have to deal with that today, okay? Yeah, I'm I, just I weird about that it. you have to press a button on this hero. Like, normally it's a two-button hero. Down bottom. Speaking of buttons, Resolution presses some buttons to get the Clockwork killed. Uh, sadly, these buttons might get, get him killed as well. They're trying to come in with the rest of old G, making the rotation off of the smoke. And here comes the relocate. Bit of Manus is down, down on top of the reload, so they forced a BKB very early on and from Topson. Seb, trying to stay alive as long as humanly possible, will still end up losing his life. No one though, uh... even through the BKB, suffering way too much damage. And Yuma and the gang are able to take away his life. Three heroes removed from play. Old G, they were definitely going to lose resolution there, but they thought they could handle the counterplay. Good patience from Divai Lama not to commit the Pit of Malice until he saw the Relocate coming in and basically sprung the trap onto old G. Yeah, 100%. And I think they got a little bit caught off guard from Adzantic's uh, BKB. It literally just came out on the Korea, so they went up high ground trying to, to deal with a few more of these heroes. They spent a lot of the BKB timing for both no one as well as, uh, as, well as Topson trying to kill the Marana. So now that... Uh, Hakoda is dead. Hakoda is dead. 
then they can't really do much else with these, with these mm. bigger bees active. So the two hustlers do a good job once again at just biding time until the the animage is is getting scary. He's getting close to that tipping point. Hasn't really taken over the game just yet, but Basher is going to be a big little item spike for, for them to play around with. And once they do start reaching that, the Abyssal Blade is only a hop, skip, and a jump away. Dyer are scanning. This game very, very close for both of these squads. 2k gold lead for the D2 Hustlers. They are currently in possession of a 70% probability win from Dota Plus. But we've seen across the series that these odds can shift very rapidly given a couple of key events. We'll see what they're going to be able to do on the side here of Old G. They need to deal with the smoke right now though. D2 Hustlers are pinging out this top lane. So no one can you get yourself out of here in time, my friend. He does have backup coming in. There's a Seb here with Resolution. They might be able to jump onto the back line of these heroes instead. Storm Spirit, not here. They TP up the Disruptor. They get Resolution first and foremost. Static Storm will oh drop immediately. And they get the quick burst onto this Clockwork. Will D2 Hustlers be able to escape from this though? The Moon Knight Shadow is down. Storm Spirit not carrying. He is carrying a gem, so he does have the vision onto Marana, but here goes Yuma into the middle of the team fight. Although we're also getting right click damage from no one. Primal Roll almost helping to kill the Underlord, but there would be salvation from the Astral Imprisonment. Divai Lama comes back to life and Topson will finish him off this time around. Seb doesn't have any more relocate, and there's no more BKB on no one. No one is isolated. No one is gonna die. Yuma all of a sudden. Gonna be threatening Thompson, who has no more mana remaining. Seb can't get him out of here. The best he can do is try to top him up on mana. And he gives him just enough to be able to leap away. But unfortunately, his own life will be given up in the process. It's a 3 for 2 trade in this top side of the map. As old G, they thought they had the numbers necessary. They took down Theolica at first, but he buys back. Comes back in. Turns the fight around, and uh, that is going to be another set of gold just going the way of Yuma on the Anti-Mage. Yeah, I think that's the biggest concern right now for, for old G, right, is that they're not dealing with the Anti-Mage. He's being able to run rampant in all these team fights. You can just see the hookshot comes in here from Theolicor, and no one with that freshly picked up crit stick just does damage, man. Like, just sits back and, and absolutely blows him up, and maybe overextending just a little bit here for the side of old G. They do deal with the Marana, but you can just see the damage that this... Uh, the mana void just did do and and without the the lack of lockdown like once once there's no raw once there's no kinetic field it's hard for no one to sit there and just and throw out the right clicks so mm. maybe that's something they need to start to think about here for, for old g is, is really getting no one in position to be able to just hammer down the right clicks on any mage because i i think if, if yuma ever gets caught like and, and no one's around he will deal enough damage to kill the any mage yeah not the tankiest hero in the world just yet but the way that these fights are going, Yuma has been allowed to play fairly freely. And what's concerning is Adzantik has already been very good with the Astral saves. And this gets even better once he picks up the Aghanim Scepter. Which he is building into right now. He's almost halfway there. So old G. Their problems will compound as this game goes on. And that was also a BKB charge expended from the Storm Spirit. As well as yet again from the Nature's Prophet. So both of them only down to 7 seconds. That does not fill me with happiness. Because uh, this Pit of Malice, we already saw the impact it could have in that last fight. Divai Lama, it'll be even easier to make sure he gets off some critical pits in the next couple of fights. Yeah, just being able to, to constantly throw them down is going to be such a nuisance for both these two teams to try and play around with. And I think old G uh, getting to the point now where they are close to some more of these item spikes that they want to try and fight. Um, Rezo... Thought he was going for a PKB, but looks like he's got something else rolling out here on the cro It's going to be the Blink Dagger. Okay. So, they know that they want to try and have this instant Blink initiation to be able to get on top of the Anti-Mage. Try and catch that Yuma, blow him up, see if they can get the kill. Transition that into maybe some towers. Maybe some objectives. Let's see where this goes now. Moonlight Shadow popped in. They do get a zip middle onto this Marana. She is probably going to end up dying. No, somehow, still alive. They don't have enough, and there's going to be a pit of malice. Onto three, here comes Yuma. Yuma looking for the damage onto no one, but is caught inside the static storm. Needs assistance to get out of it. Primal Roar will be there. The damage from Topson and laid over it. And that is going to be enough to grab a kill. There is a big ultimate from this OD, but it's not enough by itself. 
They have to TP out and flee this fight. As both cores of the Underlord and the Anti-Mage will go down. And they go down at the worst possible time. Leaving a free path into the Roshan pit for Old G. I think the biggest thing is just the uh, the patience coming in from Old G, right? Like they, they went in, they didn't overcommit all too hard. And then Yuma just walked in feeling pretty invincible as they find... The Ola core in the bottom side, and yeah, like Yuma just, just being caught there in Static Storm, and that was it. They get the kill there on the Anti Mage, so Old G get gifted. And it's uh, been able to completely abuse it just yet, but they get the Aegis now out onto their Nature's Prophet. No one is really starting to ramp up his farm. BKB, mm. full Silver Edge done now as well, gonna get close to the AC, so he is gonna be a right clicking menace. I do think after that fight, Anti-Mage has to get BKB. Static Storm is doing a little bit too much work right now. So, if he ever wants to have any hope of playing that aggressively in a fight again, BKB has to be the solution for the AM. We'll see if he decides to build it upon the respawn, as no one has taken down the tier 2 tower in this mid lane. They have upended the odds now. They're the ones that are sitting in the pole position. All up to D2 Hustlers to see if they can help turn this game around. I think you don't fight until you have a BKB on AM. And maybe until you have the Aghanim Scepter on OD as well. And indeed, yep, he queued up BKB. He knows. He saw what happened in that fight. He's like, Static Storm too good. Need a defense against it. Yeah, you just need to have some some way of playing around it. Because it's going to be hard for them to try and kill him uh, regularly, right? Like, if they Static Storm the OD, then he can still have ways of getting out. If you Static Storm anybody other than the OD, he's just going to save them. Mm. So, Yuma can even play pretty greedy, you know, with his BKB, because he does have an OD behind him. But, so just be careful here, though. Yep. And they are smoked up with said Raw, looking for a target, and that target will be the Morana this time around, so Hakoda... Somebody's gonna tank this out. No one gets yet another kill under his belt. Has long since maxed out this Desolator, but nonetheless, a little bit of gold in his back pocket. More yep, and more farm in. for old G. Yeah, it's just more more picks, more farm, more map control. Um, and just more moments for them to, to really try and close this one out. He's gonna go for a butterfly here on, on no one, so. He's going to try and have the Animage 1v1 down pat. Oh, he TP top though. Ooh. Shout out the Yolico using his own body to break the attempted move that was going to be made onto this Animage. Yuma gets to live. The Yolico, not so lucky, but they'll take it. And this no one, he was definitely going to die in AM because they just picked up the level 20 talent on Nature's Prophet. So they would have sprouted him, but at the same time, they've got them on the retreat. They're trying to bring down Seb and they should be able to get the kill. Yuma coming back for his life. No one doesn't have access to... He has access to a BKB after the second life. Big mono void from the Disruptor means that no one falls even lower. How will they deal with him with BKB though? They do have a Bristle Blade, but they try to jump away from him. Pit of Malice, it might catch onto Thompson, but Thompson gets the catch onto the OD first and they bring him down and no one trying to be this right-click engine. Turret Nature's Prophet, look at him go. Able to get a double kill with raw right-click damage here inside the Dire Triangle. So yeah, looking hell hot in this engagement. Yeah, he just was able to pick up the butterfly and just stand there and, and deliver. And I think he only really has to be worried about AM, honestly. Like, he, he, if AM's dead, then no one really has no one to be afraid of. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I've been waiting a long time to say that. A, a long time to say that. So, yeah, he's, he, he's in a really good spot. And I like his build that he understood that... The way that this game is going to go is he needs to literally just be able to deal damage to any mage through a BKB if it ever does come out, right? And just be able to tear him to pieces through physical damage. And that's why, you know, this Deso ability has gone for the extra bit of armor as well. The Silver Edge is always nice to be able to try and break him and still have that, that, that magic damage in your back pocket. But, yeah, no one's been playing really, really well um, this game. Mm -hmm. He's been playing really, really well this series, actually. Yeah. Um, so... This could be a big carry for performance from, from Mr. Nova. He also got rewarded by Gaben, a Titan Sliver on Nature's Prophet. This is actually amazing. One of the best stat heroes in the game overall. So getting some 20% base attack damage always feels very, very good. And with that butterfly that he has, nobody on the side of D2 Hostels wants to be building MKB. 
Anti-Mage can do it if need be, but not necessarily a desired item for him. OD doesn't want to do it. Maybe they pull like some Bloodthorn, but it's still a long time in coming in terms of gold outlay. They're going to pop the Moonlight Shadow as well, but they need to be careful because now OG are cognizant of the fact that they're making a movement, and they are ready for this, man. Look how they're positioned here. If you try to make a jump, they don't have adequate vision. These heroes can now blow you up in an instant. Yeah. Both teams doing a really, really good job position-wise. But said, TP is just trying to put themselves in a spot where they can defend or even try and counter anything that's coming their way. So Satanic almost available here for no one. What's the enemy mage at Yuma? Does have his BKB now as well? So maybe Scott is what's going to be able to do them over the edge. Oh. oh, oh, some pauses. Somebody must be lagging. Okay, have a monitor issue for Divine Lama. On the other side, though, Yuma has a bit of a farm issue on this anti mage. He needs net worth and he needs it right the hell now. And so many items that he still has to build. Yeah, I think he might he might be in a little bit of one more item syndrome for himself. Once Scardi, yeah. once Butterfly. At some point, MKB would be nice, but just need any kind of way to get through the evasion of no one. And then it could also get to the point as well where you're just like, oh, Scardi's just like just not enough effective HP, and then you start contemplating, do I need the heart? Do I need to try and get something else? When do I get rid of Battle Fury? Like blah blah blah. blah. And very much one one item syndrome could could be pretty real. I think that's kind of starting to set in a little bit here for um, Enzantic. Mm. I think he's at the point now where he's done this build with the the Agonims and, and the Meteor Hammer and hasn't really worked out. I think there's been like one or two saves, but like not like kind of game breaking saves where the fight literally gets reset just because you had two clutch Astrals and they don't have any spells left. Mm. They're gonna smoke up here, but they smoked up right underneath a, a, a hawk sent in by this Beastmaster. And it was just before nighttime hit, so it definitely was scouted. We need to be careful. Break out onto this anti mage. Was playing a little bit very far forward there, but they're not gonna try and throw in a roar or anything. He's gonna go back and farm. He's farming into getting a Battle Fury, but no one already trying to itemize towards having an MKB so that they are ready. And Divai Lama bottom. He does not have a blink available for himself, so he might end up dying here. Can he get through the Dark Rift? No, he cannot. But the allies are coming in to try and help him out. They're going to be going on to no one. Abyssal Blade will stun him up. Topson, his BKB is about to end. They need to be careful. No one has rolled up. He's in an awkward position right now. Can they get the damage out onto him? They burnt away his HP. No one turns around at the Satanic, but he gets bashed by Yuma. And Yuma able to find the kill. They've already taken out Resolution. And now Topson. Oh, more Salvation coming. The Astral plays. You wanted to see them, Fluke. You're getting to see them now. Adds and Tick keeps the fight going for the D2 Hustlers. They prolong it past the duration of the PKBs. They throw in the damage from this Anti-Mage. And somehow, some way, yet again, D2 Hustlers reset this game. And pretty much bring us back to parity. Yeah. Really good set of circumstances there for, for D2 Hustlers, and you can just see in the in the fight recap that just not able to do enough damage. You can see they were going in here onto Davai Lama, they're able to, to come in with the zip, blow him up, but as soon as the reinforcements start coming in thick and fast, it's very, very hard for, for old G to, to get this fight going the way they want to. They want to try and have the Disruptor drop a big static storm. He was never able to get anywhere close. The Olacor is just kind of juking and jiving and, and kind of walking on on the edge here and they all go down for basically free and once again it's the reason why that we're seeing this this od not so much just about the the disruptor counter but i think just him in general does really really well into usually what uh old g like to do they like to try and you know push the limits of their heroes and push the limits of what is acceptable for a dive and, you know, sometimes all it takes is an extra 1% to 2%, and that 1% to 2% can just be the Astral. So, mm. makes the a lot of calculations that they make end up being into wrong raids. And, you know, weird kind of metas when they see stuff like that. This is also the fight where they don't have the MKB just yet for no one. And that was just, that fight started just after Divine Lama picked up his halberd. So the kill took them a little bit longer than they thought it would. 
Great dark crit from him as well, making them think that he's just escaping, but he's bringing in reinforcements. Now D2 Hustlers won't necessarily be feeling like they're in the pole position, but certainly feeling okay about their fighting prospects. And we're starting to see now that these BKBs are at 6 seconds. It feels If they don't burst their target immediately as they go in, it starts to feel really, really hard for them. Top lane, speaking of burst, I think Rezo needs to be careful. Could find himself bursted down and they jump on him. Uh, they missed the hook shot. Yuma did find the right read, but Rezo had a blink dagger, so he's okay. This game is hanging by the balance. Luke, anything can happen over the course of these next few minutes. It's all about Roshan right now. 20 seconds until he respawns. We've seen that OG have had some success this game in taking and controlling the Roshan pit, but across this series, D2 Hustlers have made magic happen in this area as well. The other call pretty much won game two off the back of a Roshan fight. So OG will yeah. remember that and will play very cautiously around this area. Yeah, and I, and I think also... Uh... That's probably where Clockwork will start to shine, right? Like, if you just hit that that perfect timing to be able to disrupt a, a Roshan attempt. Um, and even with um, the OD, once he starts getting towards that Blink Dagger, that's when it's really going to start to become very, very hard for, the, for them to play around this this team fight. So, we're getting to the point of the sta uh, point of the game now where Any Mage is hitting his peak. He will have have a little bit of a plateau and a fall off very very soon once he starts hitting towards those you know five six items and natures and as well as storm start hitting towards their late game items but this is the perfect time here for d2 hustlers battle fury online i mean butterfly online pardon me i'm gonna try to go for the smoke play here they get the hook shot out Ooh. it doesn't necessarily land on the direct target but they still blow up the disruptor that's one down buyback is available if need be and Roshan is up. They scouted it. Everybody knows. The question is, will they buy back on Kitrak to try and defend this? It's going down fairly quickly here. So they need to make a decision and make it soon. There's the buyback. He TP's in. And it's not dead just yet. It's at half HP right now. So D2 also Hustlers can scared. still try. They are, but they're also going in with the Moonlight Shadow. We'll see what they decide to do here. Yuma blinks onto the high ground. Oh, they forced out Static Storm. That is pretty huge. Uh -oh. That's one of their big team fight spells here. And they found a catch. Will they be able to get this kill? Oh, it's just a black dragon. That's fine. I thought they found a more important target. And Yuma has found one. He found Seb. Will not be able to find the kill just yet, though. Oh, the to damage. BKB, but the primal roll and the right click damage will be enough to kill him. At the same time, they've also gotten the catch onto Thompson. BKB will come out, though, as they do not have the damage to kill him in time. No one. Gets himself ass pulled up, and Thompson caught inside the pit of madness as the BKB ends. Yuma has bought back. He wants to re-engage on this fight. Adds and tick. He gets off the ass roll onto Clockwork. The Vile Lama will finally die, as no one just does way too much damage right now. However, there's no more BKBs. Yuma jumps onto Resolution. Resolution falling low. They target? get the Electric Vortex out. They haven't managed to get the kill onto the anti-mage just yet. But they will find Rezo, who buys back instantly. Yuma needs to be careful, though. Leashed up. By these uh, nature's profit roots. They just want to try and clear out this Roshan. Get the Aegis into the hands of this anti-mage. He needs a secondary life. Pit of Malice keeping this fight going right now. Topson jumps in. But Topson is too late. Will he get the cheese? Yes, he will. Refreshes his HP. But he needs to zip this way. Oh. And that dies to the Mana Void. One strong hit from Yuma. Ends up winning the fight. As Intik still keeping the whole team alive. Javai Lama lives longer and longer. And now no one has the anti-mage directly on top of him. AM will sue to choose his target. Going on to resolution instead. In the meantime, no on the outer edge the of the fight. They have managed to bring down Ads and Tech, who buys back almost immediately. No one will he be able to fight the entire world by himself. Anti Mage right on top of him. So is Divine Lama. And no one has been strong. He has stood tall. But eventually he will fall. They don't have detection. <clears throat> Finally, there comes out the dust. Glimmer Cape gets taken away. The life of there's no one. Nature's Prophet gets taken out as well. And D2 Hustlers, yet again, fighting around the Roshan pit is their lucky charm, apparently as they do manage to kill four. It costs buybacks. It costs a lot of resources. It costs the life of Anti-Mage once. But ultimately, AM still sitting with an Aegis. They still find themselves with a 10k net with lead after that fight, your flu. Yeah, I mean, that fight definitely 
started to, to feel like D2 Hustlers are, are finally starting to, to get a stranglehold of this game. As we're looking back at the replay, you can just see the amount of times that they were able to get Astral saved. And that's the big kind of discerning factor between old G as well as D2 Hustlers right now is they have to commit so much, they have to commit so heavy on trying to kill one of these members and then Atlantic is just able to just sit there and just ash and imprison people. They're able to walk freely thanks to the Aghanim Shard as well and it was all about trying to keep no one there to, to get these right clicks going and, and Yuma, perfect buyback from him as well. Overextended, is able to get his life, get his second life come back in as well and now they have just taken a full lane of racks. They're going to look for a second one on top of the dieback from Thompson and yeah, D2 Hustlers, the, the game really kind of ground to a halt for a long time there and, and eventually was able to be taken hold of here for D2 Hustlers. Can't believe D2 Hustlers just keep doing this. Keep finding these like miraculous fights. It all started with that play bottom where they thought they killed Divine Lama, but he was just a bait, setting up for a much bigger fight to come thereafter. Because that was the fight that gave them the goal to finish off this Aghanim Scepter for Adzantic. Mm. Allowed them to get a much bigger amount of net worth and experience onto Yuma. He now has the full butterfly, Abyssal Blade in tow as well. No buybacks available for anybody except for the Swiss, but Seb, his buyback alone won't be able to win this game out for OG. And uh, because there's no buybacks left, everybody's stuck in a dieback situation except for no one who's still trying to farm his own buyback. If this Storm Spirit dies, is that just GG? I think it, it potentially could be. Oh, they're going to go for a sick little play here on a no one. Oh no, they find no one. They might be trying to force out a buyback onto him. BKB will be activated by him as he tries to turn around for this fight. Yuma in the meantime gets off a huge mount of weight onto the disruptor. 50 seconds in the grave, dead, no buyback. And now no one. His BKB is finished. He needs to get out of this fight at all costs. Yules oh, up Yules. into the air by Hakoda. There's going to be the arrow as well, catching directly onto him. Yuma knows where no one is. They're going to get the right click damage out. And he's gone. Down for the count. No buybacks though, 40 gold short at this stage. And they also clean up the IO as well. This might just be that fluke. They're gonna go and get it, use yeah. the second lane of Rex out of this. And if they don't see a buyback coming in from no one, they're gonna try and go for the jugular. Yeah, they can definitely close this game out right now. And, and once again, it, it is just so easy for Adzantec to just come into these fights and just get so many clutch saves, man. It was just like, so easy for him to just sit back and just keep his buddies alive and D2 Hustlers. They're starting to really make a showing for it here in Div 2. Oh, Seb. Oh, Seb dead. No buyback coming in from him. They're going for the Hail Mary fight. No one has bought back. He doesn't have BKB for 20 seconds. What impact can he have upon this fight? They have not caught vision of him just yet. They know where he is now. But they're not interested in him. They're interested in the game. They're interested in getting the Megas. And Yuma will succeed. Full Mega Creeps online. Alrighty. The question is, will they go to try and end this game? They're jumping onto Kitrak. Kitrak gets Mana Voided up. He's gonna drop the Static Storm though before going down. Adzantic though will save the life of the anti-mate. Thompson trying to jump back in to go onto, a, onto Adzantic OD. But the Adzantic OD saves himself once more. Abyssal Blade is there. The Bash is out onto Thompson. Thompson forced back into the base as an arrow catches directly onto dead. no one. This Nature's Prophet is gone. Only two heroes to defend against five, and they realize it cannot be done. They throw in the towel. GG well played is called. Old G fall to the D2 Hustlers in game number three.